Hi, my name is Antonella and I am very excited to talk to you today about practicing. Recently, I read this book by James Clear called Atomic Habits and everyone is reviewing it here on YouTube. However, nobody has talked about it in terms of how it applies to piano teaching and piano practicing and things like that. So if you're interested in this topic, please keep on watching and like and subscribe. So let's get to the video. How do you create the habit of practicing the piano? Here is what I learned after reading the book. Remember to focus on systems, not goals. Goals are short term. They only lead you to the result. However, with systems, you are there for the long run. It is way more sustainable to focus on systems instead of goals. For example, the goal is to play the piano. However, if you focus on systems, you are thinking, I am a pianist, I am a piano player. If you were to ignore goals and just focus on the system, you would actually achieve the same result. There are four stages, as James Clear says. There's cue, craving, response, and reward. So this cycle completes the habit loop. And the cue first initiates the behavior. So some example of cues could include, well, it's 4 p.m., you got to practice in 30 minutes, that's one cue, or you can schedule an alarm with Siri or Alexa. So say at 4 p.m. the alarm goes off, there's no arguing because you can blame it on Alexa or Siri. You can uh, pass by the piano, that could be one cue for you to start practicing. This happens to me all the time. I just pass by the piano and got to practice my skills. Another example of a cue could be listening to the song you want to learn or listening to classical music. After the cue, then we have the craving, which gives, which gives us motivation to act and to change our current state. So some examples of cravings could be, I want to make, my, I want to make mom happy, so I will practice, or I want to make my teacher happy, so I will practice. Alexa or Siri told me to practice, so if I do it now, I don't have to do it later. And maybe you listen to a song and you love it so much that you want to learn it right away to show it to your teacher or to your friends or just to simply do it. The response is the habit you perform, which is practicing. This is what we're talking about. And this depends on your ability. Now, right here, you have to be careful. Your ability and the action, they have to almost match. Uh, if the action is way harder than your ability, then you're just not going to do it. You're not going to be successful. For example, say you want to learn a piece on the piano, but your first your first craving is to learn uh, maybe, I don't know, what's a famous song nowadays? Let it go on Frozen. If you want to learn Let it go on Frozen and you have never taken a piano lesson, well, your skills do not match the, what you're trying to learn. So there needs to be some kind of compromise. Maybe first you learn how to play just the right hand instead of both hands together. The cycle is then completed by the reward. And this is where the good stuff happens. If you are rewarded right away, you are more successful to remember it the next time. And then we get into Pavlovian kind of psychology, but this is a different type of video. Some example of rewards could be getting a sticker or maybe clapping for your child or congratulating them or giving extra iPad time or whatever you find fit. Dopamine is released when you anticipate uh, pleasure as well as when you experience it. So the anticipation of a reward is what gets us to action. Say that you really love Frozen and you don't really feel like practicing. Well, how about you get dressed in your Elsa dress while you're practicing. Maybe that will release even more dopamine and you will be more likely to create that habit of practicing, especially in those days that you don't feel like it. So how can we implement this four step loop? Well, James Clear says that you have to make the desired habit obvious. Uh, for example, alarm rings to tell you time to practice, Siri announces it after your dinner, etc and you also gotta make it attractive. So you link the desired behavior with iPad time, or you can bring your favorite animal while you're practicing. 
your favorite stuffed animal, your favorite doll, etc. You gotta make it easy. Uh, only play for the smallest amount of time for you to maintain that habit, especially before you get tired, frustrated, hungry, uh, angry, bored, and so on and so forth. And you also got to make it satisfying. So clap at the end of the practice or give some kind of reward to keep you moving. If you're looking to undo a habit, then you just invert these. Mm -hmm. Why do little kids or all of us not enjoy practicing? Well, one reason students might not like to play the piano consistently is because it's hard and there is absence of immediate feedback. So for example, when you wanna play a piece, it's impossible for you to play it for one or two days and then immediately just learn it perfectly. You need to keep showing up every day consistently and this is how you get better with any kind of skill not just with piano and this is something that we do not like we do not like to wait for results we want them immediately so this is one reason why all of us probably don't enjoy practicing the piano just because you have to be so patient if your child cries and becomes really upset and throws tantrums every time it's time to practice then you know that they're just not facing the challenge of or the act of practicing enough the more exposure they have the the better they will learn to cope with it for example if you only play the piano on mondays and every monday uh, your your child cries then obviously this child is not getting used to creating this habit you've got to face it every day and eventually the hope is that they will learn to not cry anymore so they will they will learn that they will not get what they want sometimes you've got to do all the hard work uh, instead of playing with your toys and things like that so however sometimes it can backfire so you just got to know your child and you just got to know when enough is enough maybe your child is just not interested in piano and if that's the case then you should figure out other approaches however it is my recommendation that you have your children really face the challenge of practicing every day or at least five times a week some strategies you could employ for uh, having your child or yourself practice is environment shaping you might want to place the piano somewhere that is visible uh, and somewhere that is quiet that you won't be distracted and have your family members not be around when they're practicing do not have your toys around when you're about to practice do not have electronics uh, while you are practicing before or after for that matter another strategy you could use is habit stacking as james clear says you can implement new habits by using your current ones so say that you have a habit of eating dinner at seven maybe you can say after eating dinner at seven i will play the piano because you already have that habit of eating dinner at seven always and it might be easy for you it can be your cue to actually practice right after the template is after your current habit i will have it i need for example after doing my homework i will play the piano after playing the piano I will play my favorite game for 30 minutes. Whatever habits are normal in your culture or in your family life are the most attractive behaviors that your chi child will find. So surround yourself with people who are disciplined, who are maybe piano players or who are taking new skills. If you want your child to practice, surround them with opportunities for practicing. Have them attend concerts, have them listen to classical music, have them dance around while they're listening to music, listen to music in the car, sing together, and try try to create the kind of environment that will inspire them to, to keep coming back to music. Use technology to automate. So reward your child by using technology. For example, you can reward them with iPad time after they play the piano. Now this can be tricky because I know some people really don't want to do that, so it's just up to you. You can start with immediate return, uh, what we call extrinsic motivation, and then graduate to intrinsic motivation where they want to do it themselves. Hopefully the goal is that uh, now that 
they will learn by short-term rewards and maybe in the future they will learn to do it because they want to. What is immediately rewarded is repeated. This is important to note because in the beginning, children, to create a habit, they need that constant immediate reward. You can make it visual to see progress. Have a list. Uh, record by checking or putting a sticker of, of your list. You can have marbles and you can move them from one side of the piano to the other every time you repeat uh, an exercise. And you can be creative. You can fill out practice logs or you can color every time you play something and so on. Record immediately after habit. This is important. You can also try not to miss more than two days. You can focus on the measures that give you clear signs of success in order not to feel frustrated or unmotivated. You gotta provide appropriate consequences if the child is not doing uh, the behavior that they should be doing. The more immediate the pain, the less likely the behavior. Now this kind of pain uh, can be appropriate. For example, you can take I the iPad away from them or you can find some kind of mild punishment that is necessary for them to create the discipline for not just practicing but doing other things in life. Children have to learn that sometimes we can just do things whenever we feel like it. This is something that as adults we are also struggling with at times. Remember, the challenge must be in your zone of difficulty. Don't try to play something that's too hard because you will be very frustrated, but also don't try to do something that's very easy because you will be very bored. Speaking of boredom, you have to learn to tolerate it. Also, review your habits, reflect, and adjust. Learning to play the piano is a journey. It shouldn't just take two days and there you go, you, you learned it. Remember, we talked about focusing on systems, not just on goals. The goal is to learn for at least the system is to become a piano player or someone who enjoys music and plays them whenever they feel stressed or happy. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what was your favorite tip, if you've read the book by James Clear, or if you're familiar with any other tips that you'd like sharing. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye!